So in the last lecture, uh, I talked a lot about uh, thinking about how you might want to pick a methodology, comparisons between finite differences and spectral, and one of the big considerations is boundary conditions, and one of the big limitations with spectral methods is the limited representation of boundary conditions. So I want to come back to this because you really want that n log n speed, and how can we use spectral methods to help us out with a more, uh, to broaden our, broaden our capabilities with boundary conditions. That's which, what we really want to ask is, how broad a range of problems can I solve with these, with, uh, with these methods? Okay, and so we want to start talking about uh, handling more diverse boundaries. If you have very complex boundaries, you're going to have to really force yourself to use finite differences uh, or finite element methods. But as much as we can, if we can pivot our problem or make the spectral method work, the, just the sheer accuracy and speed advantage of spectral is worth the effort. So you always have that in mind. And of course, you don't feel it until you actually write code for this. And even for very simple problems, uh, there can be massive difference. The scaling of solving it n log n time versus order n squared time, you feel it. It's really impactful on you and how, it, and how your code actually is solved. So I want to start talking about how we can handle broad, more broadly things and how, we, how do we go beyond just thinking about periodic boundary conditions. So there are different methods for handling boundaries. One is a uh, method is called periodic extension. You just simply say, look, I'm working on a two pipe on a domain that's of certain size and it's not periodic. Well, I'll just do a periodic extension. I'll make it periodic and just take the interval I'm interested in. Right, so this is one way to handle it. You could say my boundary is going to be pinned like this, but I'll just extend it. You know, which is, you make the problem three times bigger, let's say in this picture, but if it's n log n, three n log n is still a lot better than n squared. That's the kind of calculus you do in your head about choosing a method. Now there are issues with doing this periodic extension. If you do this periodic extension with Fourier modes, you get what's called Gibbs phenomena. And here it is. Like as you start increasing the Fourier modes, you get these oscillations near the discontinuities. Sometimes it's worth paying the price to try to do this periodic extension. That's one methodology that allows us to extend the range of our, of our spectral methods. A second method is to do polynomial approximation. And this is going to be related to Chebyshev, because basically it's Chebyshev polynomials. And so we think about you know, a polynomial approximation of a function. And uh, if we start to represent functions with polynomials, some interesting things happen. You know, I'm going to use n points, n polynomials for n points, and the thing that I get is what's called polynomial wiggle. So if I take this very simple function and discretize into 12 points, look at what happens at the edges. At the edges, I get this phenomenal polynomial wiggle. If I refine it, you say, well, maybe if I take more points, no, it gets worse. So this is a very well-known phenomenon that if you try to use polynomial approximations on these evenly spaced domains, you get this uh, essentially terribly ill-conditioned problem, and you get this polynomial wiggle of the boundaries that destroy any meaningful possibility of using this. However, what if I do it on not evenly spaced points? In fact, what if we use it on the Chebyshev space points? So remember, we had this Chebyshev transformation, which meant that when we did this transformation, we get a bunching of the, the points at the edges. So instead of getting polynomial wiggle, in fact, Chebyshev regularizes this, and you get this very nice fitting of the data using the Chebyshev points as collocation points. So this becomes really important because all that someone is telling you is, wait a minute, this Chebyshev, I can start now using polynomial approximations, which are connected to the fast cosine transform. And so I get the n log n speed, and I get this nice representation that does not have the polynomial wiggle. So this is why Chebyshev becomes important as a spectral method, because it allows you a much richer class of boundary conditions to be working with. So in fact, here, the boundary conditions, uh, right, so it's not zero, it's not no flux. Uh, I guess I gave you a periodic function, but you, you know, you get the point here of what I'm saying. Okay, 
So let's think about Chevy Chef because if we are going to work with these polynomials, what we really want to understand is how do we take derivatives? Remember, we're solving differential equations, partial differential equations. So what we want to think about is a derivative matrix called D of n that hits a vector, produces a derivative. This is what we've been doing in finite differences in the FFT. Everything is about like what does the differentiation matrix look like? We can compute it using the polynomials itself, and this is what this matrix looks like. So you can work through some of this. There's a very nice book on, on Chebyshev polynomials and spectral methods by Nick Trefethen that really works everything out in detail for this differentiation matrix. But here's the structure of this Chebyshev differentiation matrix. This matrix is constructed in, in the GitHub I have for you. It's called Cheb. Uh, uh, and that Cheb function creates this matrix that you actually uh, can differentiate vectors with, okay? So first you put your data on an une unevenly spaced grid, the Chebyshev grid, and then this matrix takes derivative of the data on that grid itself, okay? So in fact, once you have D, D squared is the second derivative, DQ is the third derivative, fourth derivative, and nth derivative. So just matrix multiplications or matrix powers give you the higher order derivatives you need to solve a lot of these problems. The other thing you can do is you can implement boundary conditions. So one of the things you're going to do is you're going to think about if I have boundary conditions here, like for instance, suppose I imposed zero boundary conditions, no, you know, pinned boundaries uh, on, this, on this problem, then what you're going to do is you're going to come back to here and you're actually going to zero out uh, top and bottom rows of this, or first, first and last column of this, in order to impose that boundary condition. So there's a way to fix this up so you get it exactly in position. So you're going to take that D matrix, and in the D matrix itself, you're going to change it to enforce boundary conditions itself. And in the code I have there on the GitHub, you'll see how to exactly place the boundary conditions inside of that matrix. Okay. So this is this idea of using Chebyshev and again, enriching your possibilities for expressing boundary conditions. Remember the Keeley's heel spectral methods is not being able to handle a whole lot of boundary conditions. So this is why this becomes very important to start thinking about how can I still use that spectral speed of n log n and enrich the boundary conditions. And Chebyshev is a very nice way to do it. And again, it's just a matrix multiply but now the matrix is this representation of these polynomials on an unevenly spaced domain for, in order to produce uh, these very fast n log n computations.